Okay, I know what you're thinking. Where's the other two cylinders? But before you dismiss this as some wimpy economy engine build, take another look. In fact, here's a sneak peek at the finished product. Bet you can't miss that big 76 millimeter turbo perched on top. The origin of this engine build goes all the way back to 1987. That was the last year Buick produced its infamous turbo sedans, known in different trim packages as the Grand National, T-Type, and the limited edition GNX. Based on the rear-wheel drive Regal platform, these cars were powered by a turbocharged 3.8 liter V6 and rated at 235 horsepower or 275 for the GNX with the Garrett Turbo. These cars were technological marvels at the time and gained a tremendous fan base. One of these admirers is Terry Dula, who owns the 87 T-Type you see here. Terry is a former employee of KT Engine Development in Concord, North Carolina, and he currently works in a NASCAR Sprint Cup engine shop. So when it came time to rebuild the engine in his T-Type, he decided he needed something with a little more pop than the standard fare. Instead of a straight up rebuild, Terry reteamed with KT Engines to come up with a 21st century reimagining of the Turbo Buick. Tunable computer controls, high-tech coatings that weren't available in the 80s, dry sump oiling, a bigger turbo, and of course, more displacement are just a few of the improvements. The goal is to triple the original horsepower without losing any of the drivability. For the foundation, KT Engines ditched the 3.8 block for a larger 4.1 Buick case out of a Riviera. These can also be found in Regals, Electras, and some other models. The 4.1 got its larger displacement thanks to 3.965 inch cylinders, which KT Engines properly opened up with a 35 thousandths overbore to get an even 4 inches. A cat crank was also sourced that bumped the stroke up from 3.4 inches to 3.625, which pushes the total displacement over 273 cubic inches. The extra 42 cubic inches equals an 18% increase in total volume, which will not only improve power, but should also help the turbo spool up even faster. One problem with the 4.1 block is it obviously was never designed to withstand such extreme horsepower numbers. Two bolt main caps are the only option, and although the block has deep skirts, they aren't tied to the mains to help provide support. To help keep the cast iron block from breaking apart when the horsepower surpasses the half century mark, a stud girdle is added. But to work with the dry sump oiling system, KT Engines had to do extensive machining to both the girdle and the caps to make everything mesh correctly without having to use shims. The 3 quarter inch thick steel girdle ties the caps to the block at over 20 points for maximum rigidity. And ARP studs are used wherever possible over bolts. One annoyance of the stud girdle, however, is everything has to be bolted up before you can check the main bearing clearances, and that includes all 20 fasteners which have to be properly torqued. To help control heat, piston squirters are added. The vacuum created by the dry sump also makes the squirters a necessity. The squirters are just being fitted up right now. They are fed oil from a shallow channel cut into the main housing bores, which you can see here. Oil flows through this channel underneath the main bearings and through a 39 thousandths diameter hole in the squirters which are aimed to send a steady stream of oil to the underside of the pistons. The idea is for the oil to pull heat from the pistons and then drip back down into the pan where it can be routed to the oil cooler. These squirters will have to be cut down so that they will be flushed with the housing bore and won't cause interference as the coated main bearings are installed. The camshaft is a hydraulic roller unit from Comp Cams. It's fairly mild with 224 degrees of duration at 50,000 slip on both the intake and the exhaust lobes. This cam should be gentle on the valve train and we'll leave it up to the turbo to get the air in there. Lobe lift is 335 thousandths of an inch and when combined with the planned 1.65 ratio TND rockers that comes out to 553 thousandths total valve lift. Next, the main journals and caps are loaded up with calico coated bearing shells and then lubed with assembly grease in preparation for the crankshaft, which goes in immediately after. Now the main caps can be dropped into place. If you look closely, you can see how the top of each cap has been machined so that it's perfectly level with the pan rail. This is critical because the stud girdle sits on top of the main caps and the pan rail. If the height between any of these components varies, you won't get the proper clamping load on the caps and the spun bearing will be the likely result. 
With the main girdle fitted into place, the main studs are torqued to 100 foot-pounds in three steps. The smaller pan rail studs are torqued to 27 pounds. Notice how the stud girdle is countersunk around the pan rail so that the nuts clamping it to the block aren't exposed. This allows the dry sump oil pan to be attached using the same studs. Like most V6s, the 4.1 uses a split journal crank, so each rod rides on its own journal instead of having two rods to each journal like you might be used to seeing on a V8. The rod journals have also been turned down from the stock Buick diameter of 2.248 inches to the Chevy standard 2100 journal. This not only allows the 225 thousandths in additional stroke, but it also gives KT engines many more options when using Chevy rods.